E360 TV proudly presents messages of inspirational stories. Live streaming now to millions of devices, including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. With your host, Donna Guinwa, producer and host, Jim Grant, producer and host, along with Michaela Vidal, administrator and host. And Gaia Guinwa Balcone Weda, editor in chief. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Messages of Inspirational Stories. Jim, what an exciting day we have! You're exactly right. We're going to share some great information, and tomorrow we're going to have some great information for you. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, but before we begin, Donna, we, we've kept you in our thoughts and prayers. We know you've been going through some issues with the family, you know, their health and all. And we just want to let you know we've been thinking about you and praying for you. And we mentioned Thank that you. on the air. So we're, we're glad that you're back with us. And, you know, it's Thank it's you. always good to be you know, on the, on the show with you, Donna. So welcome um, back. Thank you. And it's always good to be here. It's one of the actual highlights of my day. I wouldn't be doing this job if I didn't love it. Oh, yeah. Today we're going to be talking about how to raise your energy level. Now, I know nobody out there has that problem except me and maybe Donna. <laughs> but tomorrow we're going to wind up this series with you can enjoy good health and live longer. So you definitely want to be with us tomorrow, and we're going to cover some great information that even I need to hear, to be honest with you. It's just amazing. Well, we and, all need to hear it because mm -hmm. we go through different times in our life, whether oh, yeah. it's like, like today, we're talking about how to raise your energy level. Mm -hmm. And so what, what you didn't need two weeks ago, you may need today. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's always because we're always changing emotionally and mentally mm -hmm. we're evolving that we need to um, do things to help us raise our energy. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right because uh, let's face it, life is just a an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes it goes up real high and comes down and sometimes it's just lollygagging around. Sometimes you have a cat wet trying to wipe your nose with a tail. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, that's just that, that. And I got Dixie down here and she's wanting to wanting the attention from me so you know <laughs> today is thursday is cat day <laughs> right it's always yep. cat day in my house jim oh yeah <laughs> i mean and you know I, her husband you know poor edgy he lives in a cat house can you believe he that he mm -hmm. does but you know he loves it <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and you know i always like to start out uh, on mentioning some things about national today and, you know, Donna, it's just amazing how, you know, some of the, Emerson and I, we covered, let me put this here and give you a connection there so you can click on it. Emerson and I covered uh, how some of these days came about, like Mother's Day. Mother's Day was originally, I don't remember the exact year that it got generated, but the purpose was to sell cards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, then. yeah, yeah. And I was sharing a story on the show there when we were when Emerson and I was talking about that, how one of my fellow uh, instructors that I worked with and we were reservists in the military and it was Valentine's Day. And he says, yeah, I'm so sick and tired of Valentine's Day. They make you feel like if you don't show up with a dozen roses, a pound of candy and some of and a gift, you're either a cheapskate or you really don't love her. <laughs> right. Right. And, uh, you know. National Rotisserie Chicken Day. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Ah, I love a good rotisserie chicken. Oh, yeah. Mm, mercy. That's just the cat's meow where I come from. Right. And how about National Rocky Road Day? How about that? Huh? Rocky Road Ice Cream. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is going to be a lot of people would love to do this, including entrepreneurs and people who's worked for, you know, an office. <laughs> right. And what are you laughing at now? Go ahead and tell them. I'm going to leave early. Yeah. National leave the office early day. Yeah. Sign me up. 
And uh, it, it's just amazing. And this here is also the American Indian Citizenship Day for the Native Americans. And this last one here, I don't know if I, National I Love My Dentist Day. Uh, we, we go to the dentist, you know, all we do. And of course, that's not really. Evil, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen anybody jump up and go, hot dog, I'm going to the dentist today. It's right. more like, thank goodness, you know, I got good reports there. I didn't have to, you know, use any blasting caps or anything, you know. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just amazing how all of these things, you know, these national days get started because somewhere someone had a desire and a cause to say hey and there's a lot of good causes out there that have national days like you know american heart and can cancer and things of this nature uh yeah those are those are real good causes but sometimes uh people will generate a national day because there's no legality to creating a national day um i'm going to use this only as an example only as an example. But if I was egotistical and wanted to do it, I could say this is National Jim Grant Day. And Donna would say, so what? <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, I'm using that as an example because there is no limitations on it. Right. You know, you may have, uh, you know, you may be into painting and you might say this is National you know, home artist day or something. I right. mean, it, it can be done. I mean, it's just amazing. But we like to point out the days and whoever decided it was National Rotisserie Day and National Rocky Road Day, you're our kind of people. Right, <laughs> right. Although I, I really, I don't know why I love ice cream, but Rocky Road has never been one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I don't really glock. But one of my absolute favorites is Denali ice cream. Denali, huh? Oh, that's what now we're talking. It's chocolate, yeah. peanut butter in it with with vanilla ice cream. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> she got me drooling over here, folks. She got right? me drooling. Hmm. But today we're going to be sharing some great information because this is right in Donna's wheelhouse when it talks about how to raise your energy level. She's going to talk about that a little bit. But I love how this particular chapter in the Success to a Positive Mental Attitude book starts out. It says, how is your energy level today? Did you wake up eager to face the day's task? Right. Did you push your chair back from the breakfast table with the feeling that you were just raring to go? <laughs> and did you plunge into, the, into your work with enthusiasm? And the answer would that be... Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, we enjoy doing the show. We have a lot of fun here. We, we, we share our cats and all that. But that is the secret. There, there's two things before we go any further. I just want to share with people. There's two things that you've got to do in your life. You've got to have a cause that's bigger than you. Whether you're in business or not makes no difference. You've got to have a cause that's bigger than you. Why you exist. And number two, you need to love that cause. Absolutely. That's a prerequisite for happiness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Donna, I know you talk a lot about how, you know, how to get your energy up and how to avoid things. I'm just going to give you a moment to share some information with the folks out there in TV land. Well, you know, for, for me, where I come from in assessing energy, um, and those of you who follow us, you've heard us talk about this before. It comes down to three things, a person, a place, or a thing that can rob you of your energy or a combination thereof. And I guess we can put it on the reverse side and say a person, a place, or a thing can also bring you energy or mm -hmm. combination yeah. thereof, right? Exactly. So, you know, that's a, that's a double-sided coin there. But in understanding where we're at with our energy, and so let's talk about what's robbing us of our energy right now. So when you can understand and pinpoint what the correlation is that robs us, that is really getting us stuck, okay? Because love and hate cannot exist mm -mm. in the same space. So if they're at an equal pass, a 50-50, they're going to stay right here. You can't go forward and you can't go backwards. It's just going to be stuck. But mm -hmm. once we understand 
what it is that is really, really at the root cause, causing us to have negativity in our life and, and not feel that joy. Once we get past that, your energy soars. And that is not an easy task, I will add. Mm -hmm. It can be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. But if you're really wanting to do it and really wanting more energy out of your life, you can learn to get there and you yes. can stay there. <clears throat> yes. And that's the important thing. Absolutely. Because so many times we feel in our minds that something is just concrete. Right. We can't go through this rock wall. We're, we're, at, you know, we're up against the wall. Right. And most of those uh, things that we think about, those are stories that become myths in our minds that we think to be true. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share a story with you about a young man here. Um, it broke the, the four minute mile, but he was trained by a coach by the name of Vernon Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. He was a track coach and he was an expert in teaching young people to think outside the box. He was one of the outstanding coaches of his time because under his tutelage, several high school students broke national prep school records. And Wolf had a, he had a, a, a philosophy. He says, if you, if you believe you can do it, and most of the time you can, it's simply mind over matter. And he talked about there's two types of energy. There's the physical energy and there's the mental and the spiritual energy. And Absolutely. those are the two that's at war right. because if we're stuck in the physical. You know, we're focused on problems. We're focused on the physical things of life. We're at war with our, our mental and our spiritual energy, which comes from outside. And it's just amazing how it's great that we have people like that coaches. And this, this guy here was a high school coach. But at that level, to have that type of wisdom and to share it with young people, because that's what young people need to hear today. Absolutely. They don't need to be told what they should think. They should be taught how to think. Correct. And I think it was Einstein that actually said that comment, but it's a good one. And <laughs> and does Glock agree with me there, Donna? Apparently she does. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's not Glock then, is that? No, it's Glock. Oh, it's Glock. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that he did was encourage Roger Bannister to think like that. Mm -hmm. And we've all heard great, you know, when it comes to our minds, we've all heard stories of how someone comes up on a car accident and someone is trapped inside or underneath the vehicle. And then this person and the intense emotion of everything, how they can just lift up that car and free that person. Absolutely. And they couldn't do that for a million dollars any other day of the week. Yep. And, and probably most of us have lived something like that. Yeah. In how one many, way or the other. Mm -hmm. how, how many times have we had, you know, just react just in that intense moment and done a superhuman thing? Oh, I can remember with my own oh. children. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how fast you can move in that very split second of need. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you try to do that on a normal day, especially when you got up this morning and you feel like, you know, you sit on the bed, you rub your head and you feel like you're trying to crank up the old car and you're going like, turn the switch and go, won't, won't, won't. Right. Like you got lead in your feet. <laughs> Yeah. And really the only lead you got is in between your ears, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's really amazing how our minds can actually rise to the occasion. And in going on in a, in a series of articles for Sports Illustrated, Dr. Roger Bannister, as he's known now, uh, he told how he broke the first four minute mile on May the 6th, 1954. Now you got to understand before this four minute mile that he broke, it was absolute belief. It was 100% impossible, humanly impossible. People bought into that. 
And when you buy into stories and myths, it paralyzes you, doesn't it, Donna? It does. It does. Because we shut our mind down. We shut our, our emotion and our spiritual self to say we can't. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about this on other shows, Jim. That mm -hmm. is the beauty of children. And at some point, we click that off as we grow up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Because when we're children, man, we can do anything. It does. We fall down. It doesn't get hurt. And at some point in as we grow, we let fear come in. Mm -hmm. And it can overtake us. And if we're not careful, it can overtake our life. Mm hmm. Yeah, Roger Bannister, what he did, he started conditioning his mind and his body because his coach taught him, if you push your body to the limit, there's no reason why, for example, a man 50 years of age cannot be in shape, the same shape he was when he was 20. Mm -hmm. But how many people would think about that? Men and women say, are you crazy? That's one of those mental blocks that we have justified because it's a story, it's a myth, but we believe it to be absolute truth and it's not. Right. Because I remember several years ago, I heard, that's 10 years ago or something, I heard where someone said, 40 is the new 60, mm -hmm. living longer mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And getting back to Bannister, what he did in reasoning, he reasoned if he could run a quarter mile as, as fast as he could, like in 52 seconds or 58 seconds, I forget what the seconds were. You might have your notes there, Donna. But anyway, he thought if I could just run that quarter mile and then run the rest of that mile, you know, a little, you know, just slow down some, obviously, but continue running the mile. And every single time he did that, his object was to focus on the quarter mile, then the second quarter mile, the third quarter mile, the fourth quarter mile. And as he conditioned his body after much training, he was able to decrease the time on each quarter. And then he conditioned his mind. I'll just put those four quarters together. And it was May the 6th, 1954, that he ran the four, uh, ran the mile under four minutes. I think it was three minutes and 56 seconds or something like that. Now, Remember now, prior to this, it was gospel. You can't do that. Four minute right. mileage, humanly impossible. Okay. And on March the, uh, on May the 6th, excuse me, 1954, he did it. Right. He shattered a myth and shattered a belief. And what was amazing, that feat's been broke dozens and dozens of times since then, hundreds of times probably. But in one race, on August the 6th, 1958, just four year later, five runners ran the mile in less than four minutes. Right. And for, you know, decades, probably, who knows how long, but a long, long time, there was no way a human could run a four minute mile. Because we've been told we couldn't. Yeah. We've been told. And what happens with the subconscious mind, Donna? is that we condition it to, to believe a myth, a story in our mind, mm -hmm. and our subconscious mind will not let us fail. Right. Isn't that amazing? The mind does miraculous things. Yeah. So, pardon me, but I've got Glock hair all over my, <laughs> it's floating, and yeah. it's really tickling me. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, it's so interesting because, um, you know, of course, and, and we'll add this, obviously, as we grow older and if we have some physical issues that we have to always, of course, take that into effect that mm -hmm. maybe we can't be, you know, quite like we were in our 20s, but we can be better than we were, say, in our 40s or 30s or what yeah. have you. Mm -hmm. But it oh, is yeah. true in what we set our mind to do that we can do. Oh, yeah. And I but was set up to give yourself permission and again, it always comes down to giving yourself permission. Do you give yourself permission to feel good today? Mm. Like I've got a, a boatload of things that have gone on with close friends and family here lately. Mm. Mm. Even though 
these things have happened, it doesn't drag me down into a negative state where I can't get up. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. It, because it is what it is. And all I can do is, is pray and have positive outlook. Mm -hmm. Because I know for a fact that if I sit and wallow in it, that that's where I'm going to be. And I won't mm -hmm. be able to get out of it. And mm -hmm. so there's no point in that. So I have yeah. given myself permission to say, okay, this has happened and we're processing it, mm -hmm. but I'm not living in the sadness or the state of fear. Right. That's the difference. And ladies and gentlemen, we were, I was going to have Emerson on because Emerson likes to fill in for us. He's our director of marketing, Mr. Emerson Brantley, web3direct.com. And Emerson loves done, doing the show. And yes, he exactly. says, let me fill in for Donna and Donna and you and I, we communicated and uh, I knew Donna wanted to be here today because her, it, you know, coming out and sharing positive message, this is good medicine for her. And this is good medicine for all of us when we're facing difficult times in our life. Right. And the loss of a loved one or something like that. We need to be able to, you know, don't go into a closet. Don't sit into the, go, don't go into the darkness of life. Right. Uh, that enslaves you. You Because life is about living in things that's physical like that. You cannot change. You got to love the person. And you got to, you know, realize that right here, right now is where you're supposed to be. And you should, you know, it's hard to do this. It's real hard for me. And I imagine other people too, but to give thanks for everything in your life, even when you're going through something that's difficult to deal with. When we face adversity mm -hmm. and challenges in our life, that is the time to pull everything you have inside you and mm -hmm. be grateful, give yes, thanks and give yourself mm -hmm. grace. Oh yeah and lift yourself up mm -hmm. because man, it is tough. It can be really, really tough, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we should stop where we are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can't stop living. No. And you can't stop love, loving yourself because you need love in your life. Just like your physical body needs oxygen. And you need to let that love and hell that love into your into your spirit, into your 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 mental and physical and not physical, mental and spiritual mm -hmm. side of you. Let it just absorb the love that comes in abundance, just like a water, just like a sponge will absorb water. A dry sponge will. If I can, I'd like sure. to read something that I found this morning that I thought was so appropriate for sure. this show. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. It's called the five W's of life. Who, what, when, where, and why. Who. Who you are is what makes you special. Do not change for anyone. What lies ahead will always be a mystery. Do not be afraid to explore. When life pushes you over, you push back harder. Where there are choices to make, make the one you won't regret. Hmm. Why? Things happen will never be certain. Take it in stride and move forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how we need to look at things, especially yes. when we are in that state of um, life didn't go too well and right. things happen and things happen with, with our personal lives, with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we really need to reflect on, who we are yeah. because like in the loss of it, of, of a loved one, I mean, it's hard. I've been there more times than I want to count, but in the loss of a loved one, you know, when we grieve, that's a natural process of life and it has to happen and everybody grieves differently and there is no right or wrong to grieving. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is our energy processing it. Yes. But we don't want to stay stuck. Um, in the fact they're no longer with us. We want oh, to yeah. go back into the energy portion of that, of the impact 
we had in their lives and most importantly, the impact they had in ours. Mm -hmm. You know, Don, I got to salute you today because you sharing, you know, what you're sharing with us today. And there's a lot of people out there that could say, thank you, Donna, you've blessed me with your, with what you've said, with your story and all. And that's one of the reasons why we're here on planet earth is to bless others. Right. And, you know, we could put on a show every day. Hey, everything's going great. Are you feeling good? Rah, rah, be true to your school and all that stuff. But that's not life. And that's not that, who we are. Uh -uh. No, we, we have cats in our studio. We, you know, we, we drink on the job as Donna does. just <laughs> in the <credit> there. <laughs> but sincerely, we laugh too, but also, you know, well, it's coffee. I mean, you know, <laughs> she likes a little caffeine high in them you know, yes. during the day. She's, she's a coffee holic is what she is. I am. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it's important for us to be, you know, the real us, because that's who people connect with, the real you. Mm -hmm. And when they find out what your cause is, um, it just attracts the like-minded people that you need in your life because you don't need to attract negative people in your life. Absolutely not. I mean, I know you got, you got relatives, you got friends. We all do that. We love, but sometimes they're just, mm, they, they're just too negative for you. That's they a big one. Down. That's a oh, big yeah. one. And I talk about that a lot in my coaching program mm -hmm. and I've lived that myself. So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm talking about something that I read out of a book and said, wow, that sounds good. And I'm going to apply it. Well, yeah. I've, I've walked that walk, you know, that there are people in our personal lives who, who are friends, who are business associates or sometimes even family who we literally have to cut loose because it is not healthy for ourselves. Right. And if you can recognize that, at some point, you're going to find that your life is going to be so much better. And, oh, you know, yeah. Jim can attest with myself. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he was there when I was going through a tornado of things in my business life and my personal life. Mm -hmm. And, well, I let him go. Mm -hmm. Great. Go on. Have a great life. Mm -hmm. um, may the best happen for you. But it is not part of... of who I mm -hmm. am because I cannot and will not have that kind of energy drain from me on mm -hmm. a daily basis. No. And, and life is kind of funny in, in a way of, uh, when you do something like what Donna said, I don't know how to, how to really say this, Donna, you may say it better, but it seemed like the, you know, when you move a person out, it gives you room for another person. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you, can't, you, you know, can't bring in new, you can't fill yeah. your cup. Yeah. If it's always full. And, and so you have to decide what uh, out of that cup needs to be poured out. Oh yeah. And two people that rushed into our life, uh, I've known them for some time and, but really stepped up to the plate and they were just like a breath of fresh air. And that is Marty and Tessa Haggard. Absolutely. The uh, country music people uh, star. And it's just, you know, Marty's love and demonstrating and his willingness to prove that he is a true friend. It just, it just really, you know, just think if you have someone like that in your life, or if you want to hang on to the, people that's dragging you down it's a no-brainer right we didn't know that at the time but life has a way when you start getting rid of the negative energy in your life mm. you open the door for the positive energy to come in the positive energy brings two things it brings love and it brings abundance mm -hmm. now let me ask you a question who does not want to live a life that is full of love and abundance and i'm right. not talking about things Right. I'm talking about the abundance of life that makes life worth living, health, happiness, friends, joy, peace mm -hmm. of mind. Harmony, oh, my goodness. Balance. Yeah. You know, we could go on and on with the, you know, different names we want to call it. But it really comes down to what brings peace in mm -hmm. your life. Pretty simple. 
It really is. And we like to think things are complicated or anything like that, but it's really, it's really not. I mean, we make it complicated. <laughs> yes, we, we do. actually do. And so many times when we want to do something, we want to do things on a grandioso way. And that's not really our, most of our, the folks that I know, that's not really their calling. It's the little things that you do. Well, you know, look at it like this. When we look back on life, it usually isn't the big things that we've done, like the big trips or this. You remember them. But what we remember the most are the moments along mm. the way. Yeah. Okay. Because those moments put together is what gives us that a, a love and abundance in our life. Mm. Yeah. And it's amazing how, you know, you hear a song on the radio and then whew, you're back there, you know? Yep. Right back into yesteryear. Yeah. And you think about, you know, five years ago, for example, you've heard me say this on previous shows before, but five years ago, we were all worried about something. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people pretend they don't worry, but come on. You, you worry about something. I mean, it may not be anything big. Like when I go outside, I live in the country. And one thing that I keep an eye out for, I'm not worried, you know, scared to death or anything, but I respect the fact that I have snakes around here. And some are, you know, the Texas rat snake, they call it. That's more commonly known as a chicken snake because you see them around chicken houses. But that sucker can climb a tree. Now, it's not a poison snake or anything. When I see them, I'll leave them alone because of the balance of nature. But we have copperheads here. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not an aggressive snake. I know that people tell wild stories about snakes. A copperhead, you got to mess with it for it to mess with you. Right, right. You really do. And because uh, they'll just lay there. They're very quiet. And it's kind of like, go on, leave me alone, you know. But once you mess with them, <laughs> it's trust on. me on this. The fight is on. Those little suckers can strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. But I, I keep a watch out for them because I got my grand puppy here with me these couple of weeks and she's 16 years old. She's a cross between a, 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 a chow, a black chow and a corgi. And it's a heck of a combination. Dude, I, I, the visual just went through my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a, you know, a little black dog and you know, she's got short legs, but she's right. 16 years of age and she's good. Good gracious. She's uh, she slowed down some, but I mean, she's still on the way back to the house because I keep her on a leash because her nose, she likes to sniff and just take off and go. And I don't want her to trip over a snake. Right. So that's a good worry. But on the way back to the house, she's like a sled dog. She's pulling me. Mm -hmm. Good gracious. You're an old lady and I'm an old guy. Slow down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it just and, and how we look at things is how mm -hmm. it matters. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we can look at negative and only see the negative Jim. Oh yeah. But we can look at it as a learning lesson. Mm. Right. And that's one of the things that I have learned to do by applied faith. Mm -hmm. Right. I look at the lessons learned in things that may not have been bright and beautiful in my life mm -hmm. because I believe in the depths of my soul that everything we go through is a lesson. Mm. Every single thing. <laughs> Including having Glock there. He agrees. That one's Niner. Niner? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean with a you know with a cat house, what do you know, <laughs> right? But you know, let me ask you a question. We started off this the show, you know, we talked about the opening about did you get out of bed this morning feeling good and all that? And you know, were you raring to go? And if you're like me, you know, I get up in the morning and I'm kind of laid back. And I just, you know, sometimes, not always, I should do it a lot more often. But I give thanks for, you know, the day, the heartbeat in my veins, breath in my lungs. That's just a way that I talk. And it's important to give thanks. Mm -hmm. But too many times in my life, I used to get up, you know, oh, I got this to do. I got that to do, oh, you know, uh, 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 you know, and I'm sharing it with you to ask you a question. Is it time to recharge your battery? Oh. Think about that for a moment, because 
If your energy level is low, oh, you got to recharge that battery. That's priority one. So, you know, that is something I'm big on and it was not an easy lesson for me. <laughs> um, yeah, nine's up here now. Yeah. It was not an easy lesson for me. Um, you know, I was a single mom and I worked seven days a week. I worked as much as 114 hours a week. So when I got really ill and was diagnosed with MS and realized that I needed to rest my body more, mm -hmm. that was so difficult for me. Mm -hmm. That was so difficult because I always felt guilt, right? Again, here mm -hmm. we are uh, getting in the way in our own head. I felt guilt for mm -hmm. laying down and resting for five hours because that's what I needed to do. Oh, gosh, yes. But that is critical. Mm -hmm. It is called self-care and self-love. Oh, yeah. So we need to recharge our batteries in whatever way works for you. One of mm -hmm. the things I like to do is read a book. Read a book that takes me away, mm -hmm. you know, a fictional book that I, you know, can just go and get wrapped up in the storyline mm -hmm. and I'm immersed in it. And it really, really helps me rest and relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, as you say that, it reminded me of something that I used to fall prey to back when I uh, <clears throat> played in uh, golf tournaments for benefits. Uh, I'd be out there at the guys, and we even played in uh, at Tour 18 in Houston, the Pro-Am tournament. That's the one we finished third in. And uh, I don't know what happened that day, but we were just, it's kind of like when you go bowling, you know, sometimes you're, you know, you, most of the times you're just, you know, average or maybe a little under average, a little over. And then right. there's this one night when it seems like Jupiter's in line with Pluto and the cosmic <laughs> universe is singing right. your song. We beat the we beat the pros without any handicap. And we were playing for a charity, of course. And these two guys got so mad, especially at me. I don't know why, but I, I just I knew before we even got on the back nine, we're not going to be exchanging Christmas cards this year. But my point being out there for the right reason, there were times in my mind when I felt guilty. Mm -hmm. that I'd taken time off to participate in this charity benefit, which is important in life, giving back. I felt guilty in my heart that I was neglecting my business. Right, because you were having fun and it really wasn't business related. Right, right. And I felt like I was goofing off to some, like I, I, like I didn't deserve that. Right. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, what was this? What was this show when I was doing that, Donna? We didn't. Do that. I mean, right? And I'm sure there's folks out there can relate to that, you know, or they don't feel like taking time off for themselves because they got chores to do around the house, or they got this to do. I mean, love yourself. And you know, my attitude now is that, you know, I always have a lot of things to do. Donna knows that, and I got a lot on my plate and a lot on my mind and all that. But you know what? If I can't get it done today or where, if I don't get to the point, progressed along to the point that I want today, I'm not going to worry about it because there's one thing I do know. No one's going to break in my house and steal that work from me. <laughs> Ed, no matter how much we wish they would, <laughs> I've got a front yard yeah. that needs to be raked, dang it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Be like basketball and the ball, ball balances off the course. A little help, a little help, you know. <laughs> but uh, it is so important to be kind to yourself, love yourself, and take a deep breath and relax and say, I'm worthy right. of taking some me time. Because we all need me time. We, we really do. do. And that even means sometimes getting away from our cats, you know. <laughs> well, that's almost impossible at my house unless I go outside. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> then you then, then you got Jake with you right there. Oh, yeah. He's, he's always at my feet. <laughs> 
but that is the type of things that, you know, we can learn a lot, a lot. You've heard me say a lot many times about, can you imagine what a wonderful world this world would be if everyone had the heart of a dog? And, and Donna, we were do it. We were do a show on, on dogs that go above and beyond that demonstrate their love for their owners. We could do that for a week. Couldn't we? Oh, that would be so easy. The stories that are out there online, I see them all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. So Gosh. just recently, there was, uh, I want to say it was a week or two ago, mm -hmm. a gal in California, uh, upper, in the upper high country, um, just wanted to go to the, go out and took her dog. And her dog was a, uh, oh, what's that, what was that movie? that you just recently saw, you and Evelyn had that dog, Anatolian Shepherd. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was Anatolian Shepherd, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she took, took a dog and they're just out in nature and her dog was, uh, you know, they're out kind of in the wilderness, but not too far out. And her dog was down from hers a, a ways and she heard a noise and she looked up and a dadgum mountain lion attacked her came out of a tree Whoa. and she screamed for her dog and her dog came flying. And of course this dog was no match for a mountain lion, a full grown mm -hmm. mountain lion. And they were going toe to toe and the mountain lion grabbed the dog's face and put it in her mouth or his mouth. And, but that dog would not give up. And that mm -hmm. lady, and I'm right there with her. She grabbed everything she could she even went so far as to do a chokehold on the mountain lion to get it off the dog. Mm. And finally they got away and the dog not only saved her life, but thankfully the dog lived. So, you know, we have stories like that at all times. Mm. I mean, yeah. how, how much heart our animals have for us. Yes. It's just, I know when I'm upset and I'm hurting my dog, Looks like this mm -hmm. and he'll come up and they call it when you have a great Pyrenees, they call it the pier paw because they are really known for putting their paw up on you. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. that's a communication of, you know, I'm here, I'm here. So, oh, and I yeah. know my dog does that all the time. Edge will, mm -hmm. Edge will look at me and he'll say, baby, he's, he's, he's not going to let you out of his sight. Mm -hmm. And not that he does anyway, but he'll be real close to me, you know? Oh Yeah. You know, I remember a, a funny story. It happened many years ago, back in the 70s, I think it was. And this lady, she was pretty well to do. She was an elderly lady and she had rich kids. Spoil brats is what they were. And I remember hearing the story and they were just waiting, you know, for mama to die. It was two or three of them. Because then once she dies, you know, she'll, you know, you know, they'll split up the money. And that's what they were living for. I mean, did they right. come around on Mother's Day to see her? No. The neighbors verified that. So they, they never came around to see her on Mother's Day or Christmas or, you know, she was never invited to Christmas. We used to invite her to our house for Christmas and Thanksgiving and things of this nature. So she would not be alone and right. she wouldn't go anywhere without her little, without her little dog. And so they knew that. Hey, bring your dog over too. No problem. Because the dog was the only thing that she had love that showed her love, demonstrated its true right. love to her in her life. Right. And when she died, they went to the attorney for the reading of the will. And they were highly insulted, upset, wanted to sue. And, and the, the attorney says, you can't change someone's will. Right. She was not mentally incompetent. This was her last will and testimony. Legally, we got to we got to honor this, you know. And of course, the kids were all upset because what she did, she donated a lot of her money to different charities to help make you know the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And she also set aside an allotment or, or, or a separate fund to ensure her dog would be well cared for in a very nice place that she had already prearranged. That's how much she loved her dog. And I think the kids, she, you know, there was some type of legal thing, if I remember correctly, and, and I hope I hope this is my mind is remembering this correctly. But I think she 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 willed each kid one dollar so they couldn't say that they got ignored. 
Well. And you know what? I'm going like, that's my kind of lady, you know. And you, you also hear stories of people who think an elderly person is uh, a pauper and how, you know, out of the kindness of their heart, they take care of the person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they show them that I love you as a human being because you may not have anybody, but you've got me. Right. I'm going to, you know, do things for you. I'm going to invite you over, you know, Christmas time, Thanksgiving, whatever. You know, just be there. You know, show them that they're a friend. And then after the person dies, they find out this person had some bucks. We thought they is, had a, barely enough to eat and get by. And then how they remember them and their will. Mm-hmm. And of course, now... The, the main objective here, they did not do it for money because they didn't think that they didn't even know the person had money. They did it from the love of their heart. Right. And that's, when you do things out of the love of your heart, that's how you get blessed. Okay. It comes to you from, you know, you, you cannot outgive the master giver, right. period. Right. But you can cheat yourself out of the true riches of life, can't you, Donna? You absolutely can. Because, you know, it shouldn't be about what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we all work. We all have to, you know, pay our bills. But when you are giving, you need to be able to obviously give from your heart. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you do it because you love that person, because they're Mm -hmm. a good person, because they need help. They, You just want to do something for them. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, you know, I do, I've mentioned it on my show, uh, I take care of my uh, neighbor who's a widow and I'll go out and, and kill the grass and her fence line in the alley. And mm-hmm. I've never told her I go and do that. I just go and do it. Mm-hmm. So, cause we have an ordinance here, it's Phoenix. And as it gets hotter, let me tell you, brush fires can start in a drop of a hat. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. you know, when the alley's got, you know, dead, dead foliage three feet high it can be a real issue so you know i go out there and i take care of that board don't even think twice about it Mm -hmm. yeah and you know the thing that when you when you give you never give out of need and i'm going to say something in a not a detailed way but i'm going to say this if you ever hear people say you need to give so that you can receive well it's kind of implying that, you know, because you did give now, you, you know, you owe me, you got to receive. And I'm talking about from the senior in the sky. That's not the way it works. Right. That is not the way it works. You don't give out a need. You give out a love. And you, you give out where your heart is leading you to. Because if you got the right mindset and you got the right kind of heart, the energy is going to bring situations or people into your life. It says, hey, this is who you need to help right now in this moment. And you do that cheerfully without expecting anything in return. That's when you're on the road to riches. And I'm not talking about financial riches. Right. Sure, it, that, that, that may be part of it. But the real riches I'm talking about is the, the peace of mind, mm-hmm. the joy of giving, the joy. That's of, where the energy gets created. Yeah, you get blessed and you, that's when you get out of bed and you do the boogaloo on the way to the restroom in the morning yeah. to drain the bladder. And everybody else, you know, if your wife's in there, she'll look at you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm always, <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, because I've got up in the morning, I've actually done that. I've got da 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 da. And they'll look at me like, I'm not awake yet, Jim, please. I, I just haven't had, I haven't even had my first cup of coffee, buddy. That's right. That's right. But usually when I get up, Evelyn's asleep, so I'm kind of quiet, you know, and when it, you, you know, I sit on the stool so I don't make a lot of noise. I'm not trying to be gross or graphic or anything, but I try to be quiet and then, you know, get myself out, close the door. So I go in there and turn on the coffee pot. And when I turn on the coffee pot, while my coffee is brewing, I drink a glass of water. That is one of the best ways to lose weight because you've been fasting all night. That's why they call it break fast when you have breakfast. And I learned that because uh, a lot of the Oriental people do that. And they that's how you can you, you lose weight by drinking water, believe it or mm-hmm. not. Yeah, you really do. And uh, I feel so a lot thinner than I am then. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
I, I'm not going to say anything because I've already talked too much about water flowing. <laughs> I might get myself in trouble here. But then I enjoyed my coffee. Then after I enjoy my coffee, I'm back on the, uh, the H2O, as they call it. But, you know, treat yourself. Let, let's close the show talking just a little bit about treat yourself. You owe it to yourself to treat yourself. Bless your heart. You really do. Because, mm -hmm. Donna, we've all known people and, and we may have had people in our lives that seem like they just enjoy tearing us down. Right. To make themselves feel better about themselves or, you know, I'm not as bad as you or at least I'm better than you or at least I do this. So what? Mm -hmm. You love that person, you let them go because you owe it to yourself to treat yourself. You owe it to yourself to treat yourself to a life well lived. Yeah, so give, give yourself love. a double scoop of that stuff too. You right, know? <laughs> peace, love, and harmony. Oh, you yeah. Know? When I have gotten uh, distanced myself, I should say, mm -hmm. from people who were toxic. Yeah. Um, who, you know oh, but if you do this, you know, you're going to get this and then this never happened. And it was just mm -hmm. a perpetual thing. Oh, yeah. And when I distanced myself from that, mm -hmm. holy cow, man, I, I didn't realize how much they were sucking the energy out of me until I let them go. And yeah, it, was it's... Like, it was like the sky opened up from a yeah. really dark, dark day, a really dark, cloudy day. And then the sun came out. And man, life was gorgeous. Yeah, and, and sneaks up on you kind of like a cancer or disease because that's exactly what it does because it just slowly absorbs your energy and you don't realize it. We've all been exactly. there. Exactly. But then after it's gone, it's kind of like, wow. You know, right? in my broken Spanish, I say, el mucho, el jadioso, <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> you know, I Evelyn's like just got to love there. you for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just, it's just amazing how how slowly it comes in and how it just corrodes your strength and robs your energy and bless your heart. You owe it to yourself to, you know, to be good to yourself, to love yourself and people that want to be negative towards you or say hurtful things, love them and let them go. Forgive them of their ignorance because that's what it is. It's very ignorant when someone says a hurtful or harmful thing because they do not realize who you are. They do not appreciate who you are. And most importantly, they're making their own selves miserable because they're spewing out negative energy and that always comes back to you. Whatever you give out is going to come back. So right. choose the positive energy of life. Choose love. Choose abundance because you deserve it and you deserve it every single day yes ma'am absolutely if this every was a religious day. thing i'd be passing out the collection plate now but since we're not we know we're not a religious show but we, we, we do talk about love and abundance because that's what that's the glue that holds life together mm -hmm. to make life worth living that oh is the goodness. spice of life right there mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it's the spice of life it mm. is. And Donna, you know, thank, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say thank you again for being with us because we're getting close on time. I wanted to get that in there before I forgot, before they do the hook, <laughs> pull, pull us out of here. No, but thank you again for coming to share some great messages, especially during, you know, a difficult time in your life. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, just, yeah. I know you've blessed a lot of people. It you blesses really me to be here because, yeah. you know, what we do is our calling. Yes, ma'am. It is our calling. Yes, ma'am. And ma so it is our, our hope and prayer that we have touched at least one life. Oh, yeah. On every single show we do, that we touch mm -hmm. at least one life. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it, we go to sleep feeling good about that and that we have reached out to somebody who needs to hear oh it. yeah you know after shows like this i know what donna and i will say after we go backstage that was a good show right? and what, what made it a good show was that we feel the energy flowing absolutely we're just the um conduit yeah we're just the mouthpieces i was gonna say conduit sounds better from her but i mean realistically this is why gonna, i have to be on the show folks okay yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
She's got this invisible chuck chain. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just it's just amazing how we know deep down inside the way we feel. We've been blessed. Has nothing to do with ego, has nothing to do with anything like that. It's just that we know deep down inside we've been blessed because we've blessed someone out there. That's why we're here. That's what makes life worth living. And thank you so much for tuning in today. And uh, thank you, Donna, for being with us. Goodness. We couldn't do it without your conduit and, and that sort of thing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got to tease her a little bit. <laughs> Oh uh, goodness! If I didn't what? tease her, she'd she'd say backstage, Jim, what's wrong with you? Right, you mad at me? Yeah. Well, we did are out get, of time. Did, did you get smart or what? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're you're you're, you're, very, you're you're a lot different. You're not your normal crazy self, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh my goodness, we are out of time. Mm -hmm. We are. But we will be back tomorrow. Yes. We're excited to close our show on oh, some yeah. incredibly beautiful things that we wish to share. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm looking for the title here right quickly. Please uh, bear with me. I had it marked. I took it out. But the title we we're going to be the subject we'll be talking about tomorrow is that you can enjoy good health and live longer. And sign me up for that one there in that course right now. Donna. Absolutely. I want to beat the rush on that. I want to make sure I don't miss the boat on that one. Absolutely. But, but in every show that we close, ladies and gentlemen, we just simply like to say that uh, we hope and pray that you feel worthy enough to love yourself because you deserve that. You really do. And to love other folks that are not nice to you, love them enough to let them go and forgive them. That will bless you mm -hmm. because as long as you harbor that negative energy towards them, that they're just that they're spewing on you, as long as you harbor that, You've got it's it with going, you. Yeah, it's going to rob you of your health, your happiness, your life, your everything. But once you let it pass through, you see, I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to carry that junk. I'm going to let right. it go. And I'm going to love you and I'm going to let you go, too. I'm not going to dislike you or say anything mean about you. I'm just going to love you and let you go. That's when you're going to be blessed in life with love right. and abundance. And Donna and I, we hope and pray that you and your loved ones are healthy and happy. We pray if you're going through difficult times, we pray that you will, you know, there'll be someone out there. And we hope we bless you in this show, but also have others in your life that will bless you. And if not, look for others because there's people out there who want to be a blessing to you. That's their purpose for being there. Absolutely. And we'll see you tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. Great day, or great evening, great morning, whenever you Absolutely. see the show, because we're video on demand. Yeah, Donna's got it set up when they demand, we, we come on, you know, so <laughs> all they got to do is click on the link. But we'll see you tomorrow, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.